Hey, it's Jen Healy, and I am so enjoying this challenge. It has been very challenging in such good ways, inspiring growth in conversations and interactions with people that I adore and deeply appreciate their perspectives and just the opportunity to share and connect in a deep way and be true to ourselves, be more real, be more vulnerable, be brave, just like the challenge acronym that I'm giving of bold, real, authentic, vulnerable, exposed. So this has checked all the boxes. And so I was considering what to choose in terms of a topic for today. And it is such a hot topic, so I might have to do several segments and keep them between five and 10 minutes. But I wanted to get into relationships and how many of our fears come up in relationships and are brought up in relationships. What is my personal definition for relationships? What's important to me? And how I feel about marriage and kids and some of those traditional paths that people have chosen to take. And I do, of course, honor everyone's choice. Everyone's on their own journey. And I have taken, I'd say, an unusual path in this life, not only with my career and what I've moved into as my dharma or my purpose, but also my path around relationships, all relationships, really. We tend to have a slant and a hyper focus in our society on primary relationships being uh, romantic relationships. And those can be a wonderful addition to our lives, but we have relationships, familial relationships, friendships, uh, intimacy on different levels, as I talked about, physical intimacy, emotional intimacy, spiritual intimacy. And then we have this relationship to self and a relationship to God, a relationship to source. They're all different kinds of relationships, as well as our partnerships being that of domestic and business, as well as the other <laughs> myriad of ways, the full spectrum of ways that we relate in this world. So this great conversation came up between me and a dear soul sister. And I wanted to share my fear around being honest and I am committed to being a truth teller and I tend to be extremely honest and direct, but it is still challenging for me, especially in a, a relationship that is a friendship where I wasn't asked for my opinion or feedback. And I like to be supportive. I like to know how someone needs me to show up in, in the relationship at that time. Same with my clients. Do they want me to just listen? I can lend an ear. I can be empathetic. I can give feedback. I can give advice. I can relate and share stories. There's so many different ways that we can support one another. But if I'm going to intuitively read a situation or give my opinion, I like it when it's welcomed or people ask for that. Other, otherwise, you know how it feels when you get this unwelcomed advice or feedback from people and you were like, yeah, I was just hoping that you could listen and, and be supportive with empathy today. You know, we need different things on different days. So I was brave and shared with her what I was seeing in the relationship that she's in. And uh, I'm always relating it back to me because I was seeing something that I tend to do. And that is I tend to not have my needs met and not express my needs. And this has been a long term pattern that was, of course, learned in childhood. I had this story for at least 40 years <laughs> that my needs didn't matter. So why even ask for them? How on earth is anyone going to even eat my, meet my needs if they don't care? And I grew up in environments where it seemed like my needs didn't matter. And these are all stories we tell ourselves, right? And that no one really cared to even try and meet them. So why bother sharing them? And I discovered this about 10 years ago. It was definitely from lots of different spiritual teachings and different practices, but the practice of compassionate communication and studying nonviolent communication techniques helped me so much to start leading with feelings and needs when some sort of discrepancy came up, some sort of disagreement, or even 
in setting agreements, it doesn't even have to be a disagreement. Can we lead with feelings and needs and making clear requests so it does feel good for others to give to us? And so we can actually encourage or inspire others to show up for us instead of it seeming like a demand or control or manipulation, all these strategies we have as humans. So I shared last night how I saw that it's possible that some of her needs aren't being met and therefore she was spending most of her energy caretaking and being concerned about how this other person was feeling instead of really asking for what she needed. And I have done that in many a relationship. I've spent time taking care of the other and being aware of their sensitivities or catering to their sensitivities, so not wanting to upset someone, not wanting to hurt their feelings, all the knots, not, 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 not. And then I got to a place where and I'm still working on it every single day, where I feel like it's really important for me to at least express my needs and make requests, even if they may not be met, and dealing with that disappointment or feeling of rejection that might come up. Those are the fears that come up in relationships when we ask for what it is that we want and making clear requests, which means getting the knots out of it. Most people are spending a majority of their time, 90% of their energy, focused on what they don't want and the behaviors that they don't like. We can always turn that into what we do want. It is important to know what you don't want to narrow down and clarify what you do want. And then I really make it a practice. Now that I know what I don't want, what is it that I truly want? And how can I share that in a way of taking responsibility for the way I'm feeling and make a clear request, a doable action, so that it isn't so amoebic and amorphic when we're interacting with one another of what does it mean to feel loved or to feel honored or to feel respected? What are those specific actions or behaviors that relate to that because everybody has a different definition of what that looks like. So this is a huge topic. I'm going to break relationships up into three or four different videos sprinkled about. Maybe I'll do a follow up here. But I wanted to get into now that I shared that part about being brave enough even yesterday to share my truth and to express what my needs are and to encourage other people to express what their needs are and even get in, in touch with what do we want and what are really the deeper needs because the basic needs of every human the six basic needs that tony robbins shares and many other uh, spiritual teachers are the same. We all have the same needs and then we can create more of a heart connection and an understanding for one another and really open up the lines of communication that come from more of the empathy and the empathetic part of ourselves instead of the dualistic reality where relationships become like a pol polarization and a back and forth and right and wrong and we all have experienced that and then once communication breaks down then connection isn't there and then there's no intimacy. There's no real ability to drop in and be vulnerable with one another, to feel safe and to have uh, a loving and supportive and fulfilling, satisfying relationship. So I'm very careful about who I get into relationship with now that I know what I know. So for the past 10 years, unless somebody is truly exhibiting the ability to meet my needs, I tend to not get into a romantic relationship. I might have other alternative forms of relationship where it can be uh, a deep friendship, it can be a soulmate or soul family, it can be a playmate, it can be um, someone who is assisting me or uh, a live-in domestic partner. There's all different kinds of ways that we can creatively get our needs met without falling into the normal roles or definitions of what a relationship is and what it looks like. So I'd love next time to talk to you about my definition of a relationship and also my personal uh, understanding and meaning of marriage and the path to have children 
or to not have children? And can we have our creative energy be expressed in other ways? I feel like that would be a great second video to focus on. And I appreciate you listening to this. The relationship to relationships, it's such a huge topic. And how do we face our fears and overcome those insecurities, the fear of rejection or the fear of hurting somebody's feelings or disappointment? They're all really big fears, but we all have not only the same fears, but we have the same needs. And this is really helpful to keep in mind whenever we're interacting with another. Thanks again for listening. I look forward to hearing from you and I will be back tomorrow. Aloha.